Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 135th scale US M38A1C Jeep with the M40 106mm recoilless rifle. Now unlike many of the other smaller scale builds which are listed on the ECA channel in which those builds are built for private commission and belong to a private collector, the model that you see here was built for my own personal collection and it's not for sale and or purchase. However, like I often mention in these build videos, I often take on commission build projects from vehicles ranging from 135th scale all the way up to 1 6th scale. As for availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. Before we continue with the video, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around the model. And this vehicle here is the M38A1 Jeep. The M38A1 was the quarter ton utility truck vehicle that the US military utilized from the mid 1950s all the way up into the 1960s. The M38A1 series was based upon the lessons and improvements that were learned by the US military and engineers from the World War II experience of the infamous GPW Willys Jeep. The original Willys Jeep was a fantastic vehicle and served the US military very well into the World War II period as well as also into the early 1950s. However, by the early and mid 1950s, several of the drawbacks of the Jeep were becoming apparent and these type of features were corrected and built into the newer generation of quarter ton vehicles, namely that of the M38. The original M38 was very similar in body styling to that of the World War II era Jeeps, however it did feature several other modifications, namely that of a stronger horsepower engine, as well as a tailgate and a more user-friendly refilling system for that of the fuel tank. The original M38 Jeep entered production in 1949, right after World War II. These vehicles were in production from 1949 all the way up into 1952, and several of these units actually saw service in the Korean conflict. After 1952, production of the M38 stopped while, when the production of the M38A1 began. Now, even though both vehicles are designated with the M38 nomenclature, the M38A1 and the original M38 share very little in common. Most specifically, the easiest way to point them apart is that with the body styling. The body on the M38A1 utilized an all-new design compared to the World War II reminiscent pattern found on the M38. The M38A1 featured a lot of pressed stampings for that of the body panels as well as the hood. And the stampings were also a lot larger and more bulbous in comparison to the simpler stampings found on the original 38. The M38 one is distinctive with having covered fenders as opposed to the exposed fenders found on the M38 as well as the previous GPW Jeep. In addition to the body stylings, the engines were also different. The original M38 utilized the Willys MC 51 horsepower engine, while the M38A1 utilized the 134 cubic inch Hurricane 14. Both the M38 and the M38A1 featured all of the design improvements that were needed to have been made to the original Jeeps, and this would include, like I mentioned earlier, that of the external fuel filler cap, as well as the tailgate, as well as the ability to Ford with that of a upgrade kit, which would be bolted to certain portions of the vehicle, which would give you a snorkel and an extended exhaust pipe. The M38A1 was also in production for a very long period of time and was a very successful little vehicle, not only with use with the US military, but was also widely exported to other allied countries. In addition to that, the M38A1 was also the basis for the civilian Jeeps that have been on the market since the 1950s and onward. The military version of the M38A1 was in production from 1952 all the way up to 1971. And these vehicles are still in use in some portions of the world today. As for US military service, these vehicles again served with the US military during the mid Cold War period from the 1950s and were also used in the Vietnam War into the 1960s. At the end of the 1950s and into the 1960s, the US military adopted the M151 Ford Mutt. 
The MUT basically replaced the M38A1 for the main utility truck of the military. However, even though the MUT was the official quarter-ton truck, the M38A1s were still widely available and were still used in conjunction with the MUT throughout the 1960s. In fact, in the 1970s, there may have possibly been several of the M38A1s sitting languishing away on military bases for use with both Army Reserve as well as the Army National Guard units. In addition to the Jeep, this model here also features that of the M40A1 recoilless rifle. The M40A1 was a 106 millimeter anti-tank weapon that utilized the recoilless rifle concept. The basic idea is that to fire a very large projectile, instead of having a complicated recoil and lock breech mechanism, which would add a lot of weight and you would need something the size of a tank or a large carriage in order to house this unit, the recoilless feature vents the most of the propelling gases out of the rear portion of the breech. With this, this gives you the advantage of being able to fire a very large projectile that has the capability of penetrating tank armor while keeping it nice and light and mobile, light enough to be carried on something like a Jeep. The M40 system was developed in the 1950s and saw action with the US military from the 50s all the way up into the 1970s. The system was widely successful and was only replaced by the US military with the advent of the tow wire guided missile system. Having said that, the M40 is still widely used today and can be found in use with several militaries around the planet. Now the model that you see here is built mostly out of the box, however it does feature one or two alterations that was made to the original stock kit, of which we'll be going over in this video, along with the review of the basic kit itself. Before we continue with the video, let's go ahead and take a step back to when the models first started in order to get a good idea on what the base starter kit supplied you with. And here's the model just before the start of the project. For the base starter kit, I'll be utilizing this 135th scale plastic M38A1C kit from AFV Club. The M38A1 family in 135th scale has a somewhat interesting story to it. These kits here date back to the late 1990s, more specifically 1997. Prior to the release of these kits, when it came to the quarter ton Jeep vehicle market, there wasn't really a whole lot of variation or options available in this scale, specifically in plastic. At this time, the only real kits that were out there were the World War II Willis MB Jeep from Tamiya in its both original tooling and new tooling configuration, as well as a few of the Russian variants of the Gaz Jeep, which again are the World War II version and were also from Tamiya. Outside of the World War II Jeeps, there were plenty of M151 Mutts that were on the market, again also from Tamiya, as well as also from Academy, which at the time could arguably say were nothing more than than copies of the Tamiya tooling, but that's a story for another day. So there was this huge gap in between vehicle types. You had the World War II vehicles on this end, and then you had the Cold War vehicles on this end, and there really wasn't anything in between. Now for anyone who is an avid military vehicle enthusiast, you will know that during the 1950s and the post-war period, there were a lot of different variations of Jeeps that were being made and developed in the United States at that time. The M38A1 was one of them. The original M38A1 kit was released in plastic from a Taiwanese company named Skybo. The Skybo kits were made from entirely new tooling and were very nicely done and rendered in 135th scale and also all in plastic. These vehicles became very popular on the modeling circuit at the time and they released several versions. Of course, after the original M38A1 came out, they also released this version here with that of the recoilless rifle. The kits from Skybo were very nice kits and were well received among the 135th scale armor modeling community. Into the early and mid 2000s period, the company Skybo was bought out by AFV Club. Once AFV Club bought out Skybo, AFV Club went ahead and released all of the Skybo kits, but went ahead and reboxed them with their own graphics and logo, like you see here with this particular kit. Now, these kits were in production for a period of time, however, I'm not sure if they are still in production at the date of this video. 
Now, being an AFE Club kit, they are not necessarily going to be that easy to find in some place like a local hobby shop, as AFE Club kits do tend to be a little bit more scarce with their distribution as opposed to the other makers like Dragon or Tamiya. However, these kits here can be found on online retailers as well as on places like eBay. This kit here I acquired off of eBay and I pay basically retail price. These kits can be purchased anywhere between 35 to 40 US dollars. This price was basically the same as when these kits were launched as new and these kits are considered a lot more pricier compared to some of the other kits in the same scale. And specifically keep in mind that this is nothing more than a Jeep and yet it costs very similar to that of something like an actual tank. Having said that though, these kits are very nicely detailed and do build very well. Starting with the model's graphic design and the box art, the AFE Club version has the box art that you see here. This is very similar to the Skybo version in that the Skybo version had more of a diorama scene in a painting format with the Jeep in the exact same location. As you can see, the M38 with the recoilless rifle is very nicely rendered. And AFE Club for a while has this thing where they have a posterized version of the zoomed in section of the box art in the background. We have the features listed in both Mandarin as well as in English. And the title is in this dull olive drab banner. It's a very nice slick box art. As for the sides, we have here the logo and some samples of the finished built model. As for the type of packaging, it's very similar for the other AFV Club kit offerings that not only have, I've actually posted on the ECA channel, but also that can be found on other channels as well, other kit reviews. The boxes are very thick. When I crack it open, you'll see. And they continue with the advertisements along the inside leading edge, which is actually very nice. See the other kits that are offered specifically at the time of this kit release. Moving on to the kit itself, this is an all plastic kit. There is no photo etch and or aluminum parts that are supplied. However, these parts can be purchased on the aftermarket scene as there is quite a bit of infrastructure for these kits that are out there for anyone that wants to go with the extra detailing. For my build here, however, I'm just gonna be building it basically out of the box with the supplied parts. Now, like I said, inside the kit here, you're gonna have components labeled for AFE Club and also Skybo. Things can get a little bit hazy on which parts belong to who, as I believe the two were the two companies were actually making the same parts for each other for a little while. Starting with the top runner takes us to the M40 recoilless rifle. Here you can see the detailing on the yolk, crank handles. And on the breech face. Some parts specifically for the, the M38A1C variant. Now the runner is labeled as AFV Club for that of the recoilless rifle with the date of 1997. As for the plastic it is your typical AFV Club olive drab plastic which is nicely molded and does work very well when it comes time to the actual assembly. Moving down takes us to the parts that are actually going to comprise that of the Jeep itself. Here we have most clearly the, clearly that of the wheels and that of the suspension. This kit does have an engine interior detailing as well as a complete detailed undercarriage. Here we have the frame and the leaf springs. What's nice is that the frame is all one piece and unlike some other kits on the market, in which you have to actually assemble the frame, the one piece frame does save a lot of time and headache, specifically with alignment. Here you can see the date, 1997 and Skybo. Moving on to the bottom of the box, takes us to the body cabin portion of the M38, A1. For anyone that, that is an M38 A1 aficionado, you'll definitely recognize the nice crimp lines found on the side panels. They are nicely rendered on this kit. There's the 
infamous grill and also the distinctive hood with the hump. And here we have a runner of clear plastic parts, which of course for this, in the context of this kit, are that of the windshield and also the some of the head and tail lights. Moving down to the bottom of the box takes us to the instruction sheet. The instruction sheet has a small little insert for other markings that you could and options to make this vehicle. And as for the instruction manual itself, it looks to have very clear and nicely rendered graphics and look to be of very good quality and should of course be very helpful when it comes time to assemble this kit. Taking us to the very bottom of the box is out of a decal sheet. These are of course water slide decals which is basically the standard for 135th scale kits, plastic kits on the market. And of course one nice feature on AFV Club boxes is that of the non-stop advertisements. As you can see even on the bottom of the box we have here a insert that is integrally printed that has another advertisement for more kit offerings made by AFV Club. And of course this is, you can see the how dated this is as I don't believe the AFV Club 148 scale Tiger kits are still in production as this was kind of a fad of the mid 2000s time period but again that's information really more or less for another video. Starting with the models undercarriage and chassis this model here just like many of the other contemporary soft skin type kits that are on the market features a very detailed undercarriage type assembly. This would include that of the frame, the engine, the transmission, the differentials, as well as also the leaf spring suspension. And here's the underframe of the model, now fully assembled, and here you can see all the detailing present. All the details that you see here were supplied stock with the kit, and were all went on as per the instructions. Now, one area to point out has to do with that of the transmission. Now, the way these Jeeps work is that we have the engine located in the front, the output shaft connects to a transmission which then divvies out the power to the front and rear wheel differentials. Now all the components found on the kit are molded in plastic and are very nicely molded for the medium that they're made in and also for the age that the kit is. Keep in mind this kit does date back to the late 1990s and early 2000s. The plastic pieces are nicely rendered and do go together fairly easily with really no hiccups or issues. The problem, however, that I encountered with this kit here, now this may be for this particular model, is that for some reason, even though the transmission components were properly installed to their appropriate locations found on the frame, I had difficulty with mounting the body to the frame of the vehicle, as some of the top detailing found on the transmission was striking and making contact with the body, thus preventing it from being fully mounted on. In order for me to get the body to fit onto the frame, with a Dremel I had to carefully amputate some sections of the nicely detailed detailing found on the transmission. Now fortunately the parts that I had to cut away were on the top portion and are not visible once the vehicle is built. However this may be a issue found on the Skybo kits. I was unable to find any material on this issue from the other forums that built this model back in the past but it is an issue that I ran into. Now, all of the parts, I must say, did fit onto the frame very easily, and it wasn't as if the pieces were not improperly fitted, which can be an issue and something to watch out for, specifically something with a frame that we have here, as fitting of the components is absolutely crucial in order for the vehicle to go together. Like I said, this may be something to pay attention to when it comes time to, for anyone who is thinking or has one of these kits in their stash and is about to start on one. Another tip when it comes time to the suspension of the model is that just like with all the other models that are found on the ECA channel in both 135, 116, and 16 scale, I generally like to pre-paint a lot of the components while they're still on their runners at the start of the build. This is specifically true for tanks as you want to get into a lot of nooks and crannies that are found on the suspension and underhaul areas, which once fully assembled, you're not going to get able to get a full coat of paint into these areas. For this model here, this is also extremely recommended. As like I showed before, there are a lot of little 
nooks and crannies found in all these little bits that once assembled you're not going to have a really easy time in getting these pieces fully painted so this is definitely something i recommend that before you even start removing parts off of the sprues to get all of the components in their base coat via an airbrush or spray paint or whichever paint method you deem fit prior to the start of this project once everything is pre-painted with a rough base coat the assembly goes by a lot quicker and you will definitely not miss any of these areas with paint once the pieces are fully assembled as they already have a nice coat of paint already on them. This is specifically true for not just the undercarriage but also the engine and engine compartment detailing as well. Now just like many other smaller scale Jeep kits on the market this vehicle here does feature a somewhat detailed engine and engine compartment. Now this Skybo kit is nice in that you can model the hood either in the open or closed state like many other kits on the market but another feature it has is that you can model the vehicle with a removable hood. This is something that is seen on some car model kits on the market but for military vehicles is something that is somewhat unique. Now the Skybo kit what's nice about the hood detailing is that the piece snaps on very well and is held in place quite securely. So much so that as, as you can see I can hold the model upside down and the hood will not simply fall or pop off. This is a nice feature in that if you're transporting the model around you don't have to worry about the engine hood popping off and falling on the floor either getting lost, scratched, or even broken. The way this is done is that the Skybow kit, the hood kind of clips into place with the way the hood is designed to mate with the fenders as well as the body cabin of the vehicle. To remove the hood it simply pops off, however with this particular version of the M38A1 this is a little bit trickier due to the overhanging barrel of the M40 recoilless rifle. To pop the hood off, let's see if I can get this in frame, simply grab onto the hood nice and gently and slide the hood directly off. Here you can see the detailing, hopefully in the light, of the Hurricane engine. Here you can see the engine, the radiator, the cooling fan, there is a siren, and the various air filters as well as the starter motor, which are found on this pattern of engine. The engine is another component. Like I said before, it's good to pre-paint before assembly, but even after assembly, you could give it another coat, as well as paint a lot of the smaller fittings on the engine with different colors, as these would be found on the real counterpart. Once everything is painted and weathered, the engine simply drops directly in place and the model is then ready for that of the assembly of the rest of the body panels. To reinstall the hood, I simply just slide it in. And then when it gets, when it gets to its sweet spot, it simply just clicks directly in place. Moving our way to one of the most distinctive features found on this Pounder Jeep is that of the grill. The grill that you see here is molded in three different components. We have the outer grill slats and then two portions of the radiator. We have the radiator and then the radiator duct. Once all these components get mounted, it leaves for a very nice realistic type display that we have here. The radiator detailing also has its inner mesh type pattern that is found integrally molded. Now of course trying to view that through this lighting that we have here is going to be problematic however I will say it is there and can be seen. Another nice feature found on the grill is that of the the two headlights. The headlights are molded in clear plastic and once added do give a very nice bit of detailing compared to just having these pieces molded integrally to the grill which is something that is generally found on older pattern model kits from the 70s and even into from the 60s. What another nice feature on while on the front is that of the two front tow hooks. These are also separate moldings and need to be glued on. The advantage is that it gives you very nice crisp detailing as well as you can model these pieces in the deployed state if specifically if you're doing a diorama where you're involving some kind of a towing type scene. 
The drawback of these pieces is that they are very frail and very fragile and can easily be broken upon removal from the sprue or even removing of any type of sprue residue found on the part. A lot of care needs to be exhibited on these pieces, not to mention they can also easily blow or fling away off of your tweezer when it comes time for handling as well as mounting. A lot of care must be exhibited on these components as well as many of the other small scale pieces found on this kit as well. Not only are these hooks found on the front, but they are also found on the back and on the M38A1 are found on the inside portion of these two bumpers that we have here on the rear. Moving along takes us to the vehicle's wheels. The wheels that you see here, again, the kit original ones, and were simply mounted as is out of the box. The kit's wheels are very nicely rendered and definitely replicate that of the type of rubber tires found on post-World War II quarter-ton pattern of vehicles. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that there are two patterns of wheels that are found on the kit, and one version is modeled for that of the front wheel, while the other is for the back wheel. This is properly indicated in the instructions, and care must be exhibited by the builder in order to prevent any confusion with the mounting, as if these pieces are mounted swapped, that would be an inaccuracy with your build. Now, the way the, the wheels are designed to mount is that they are designed to pivot with the way the wheel locking system is. However, when it comes time for the final mounting, even though they can technically pivot, is definitely not something I recommend, as honestly, this is not going to be something that you're going to be playing with, like a Hot Wheel or a die cast type car. Once the wheels are mounted on, just set it and forget it. In addition for the main tires being nicely rendered, the spare tire is another bit of detailing that also shares some nice modeling and nice rendering. As you can see, one quick trick that I did was I painted a little reflector that is found on the wheel mount, which is present and is a feature on these post-World War II quarter-ton vehicles. Now, generally, these rubber tires are mounted in the back portion. However, due to the M40 recoilless rifle, they located it here on the side, along with that of the jerry can. As for the jerry can itself, this is, again, purely out-of-the-box kit and mounted as is. Now, to make this rendition here of the M38 with that of the recoilless rifle, you do have to make some modifications to that of the body panels. Namely, you have to drill some holes for the addition of the components for that of the recoilless, as well as the removal of the jerry can to this side here of the vehicle. This is all properly labeled in the kit and attention, simply pay to the instructions, will give you the appropriate results that you require. Now, if you may notice, the jerry can, I went ahead and painted the top portion of this piece red, as this is a feature I've seen personally on real military vehicles at military vehicle shows, as well as using my real jerry can here as a reference point. And this is a real jerry can I purchased from a military vehicle show. It's left in its original paint, and this is a 1952 dated U.S. fuel can. In addition to the fuel can being mounted on the side, this version of the Jeep also has its shovel mounted in this section over here, again due to the addition of the M40. On the opposite side, this is purely left stock and there's no modifications that differentiate this version of the Jeep from the standard non-recoilless rifle equipped variant. One unique feature found on this pattern of the Jeep, namely that of the M38 and the M38A1, and was an improvement from the original Willys, is that they have an external access fuel cap. On the original World War II Willys Jeep, you would have to pivot the driver's seat up and out of the way in order to refill the gas tank. This was definitely an improvement compared to its World War II counterpart. Another nice trait that this kit has is it does have the nice pressed body panel lines, which is definitely a feature found on the M38A1 pattern of vehicles. This is found throughout the entirety of the kit, and again is definitely one of the attributes that makes this a very nice representation of this vehicle. Moving our way to the model's windshield, the windshield that you see here is obviously one of the differentiating components from the this version of the M38A1 compared to the stock counterpart. Of course, this version with the recoilless rifle needs to have clearance for the rifle when put in its storage mode, and that's why there's this large U section cut into the windshield.
Now, what's interesting is that even though the windshield has this U cut into it, the kit only wants you to mount on the windshield wiper on one of the locations. Another interesting trait about the kit is that the kit gives you, in its clear plastic runner, the components to have both of the panes for that of the standard windshield. This is undoubtedly a carryover from the M38A1 kit. This is a nice attribute to have in that it's good to have a spare in that in case you have a mishap with some of the glue or even a little drop of paint, you can easily damage this clear plastic and the extra spare one is a nice tr feature to have on hand as an insurance policy, which by the way was something I kind of ran into on this Jeep as during mounting, I had a small little drop of glue on a corner of the windshield and that piece regrettably was not salvageable. However, no need to panic as I did have an extra windshield again on hand. Now the windshield does have its little rubber gasket molded into both the front and rear portion of the windshield and windshield mount. These are painted with a flat black with a very thin paintbrush and once done do give you a very nice bit of detailing and does help the model pop as opposed to leaving it all with its base coat. Of course needless to say you can model this component either in the open state like I have here or in the closed folded state. This of course depends on the builder's preference. Moving from the windshield takes us to the driver's section. The vehicle does feature all of the appropriate controls, namely that of the gas, the brake, as well as the clutch. All pieces are nicely finely rendered as well as the other components found on the transmission. If I could get it in light as well as in frame. The stick shift as well as the other controls for the driver are all present and are nicely rendered as well as the instrument panel itself with all of its gauges represented in the molding. The seats are also very nicely rendered and build very easy as well as effortlessly. Again, when it comes to painting, I went ahead and utilized a khaki paint from Tamiya in order to get the base coat and then the weathering sealed the rest of the paintwork along with the rest of the paintwork on the Jeep itself. As for the steering wheel, again this is stock and if you notice I went ahead and went with a glossy type color as the material that was over molded on these steering wheels tend to be that of a glossy polymer type rubbery material. Moving our way to the rear portion of the vehicle takes us to the ammunition racks. Now on the standard M38A1 as well as the M38 they would have a retracting tailgate in this section here which was a changeover from that of the World War II Willys. However on this vehicle here with the M40 the tailgate was completely deleted in order to have clearance for that of the storage tubes for that of the M40 recoilless rifle. Now the recoilless rifle just like many other artillery pieces of the period had their ammunition stored in paper tubes. These paper tubes on the vehicle here would be stowed in place with that of two small nylon canvas straps that would secure everything in place. As for the tubes, these are stocked with the Skybow kit and are very nicely detailed. If we notice on the end portions, I went ahead and painted them with gloss black. This is a feature found on the real storage tubes as the main tube itself would be a black paper cardboard, but the end caps would be that of a glossy black metal component. A swipe of the black paint, of the gloss black paint specifically, really helps differentiate these pieces from the flat black used on the paper tubes themselves. Moving our way from the ammo takes us to the most interesting and coolest part of the entire model, which is that of the 106mm M40A1 recoilless rifle. The components you see here is again all stock components and the piece is a very nicely detailed component and does assemble very well. The vehicle is mounted on a tripod which is distinctive for that of the M40 and the tripod mounts in on the two quarter end panels that we have here. The kit is designed to simply drop onto the stock M38A1 kit with no mods necessary. Now the piece can actually rotate on the tripod for that of the yoke of the M40. However, when it comes time for the actual mounting onto the model here, 
the builder is really left to model the gun in really two type of configurations. You can have the model as I have it with, which is that in its storage mode. To model in the storage mode, we have here the travel lock and the travel lock clamps onto the barrel and keeps the gun firmly in place. As you can see, the gun is canted slightly to the side in order for it to mount into the mount and have its clearance for that of the windshield. You can, of course, model the gun, either pivoted to right or left, as well as several variations of the elevation. The M40's detailing is very nicely done in that we have here the Venturi system found on the breech surface. The little breech crank handle which opens up the system. The piece can be modeled either in the open or closed state. However, the vehicle does not give you any ammunition outside of its tubes, so that is something that the builder would have to acquire himself on the aftermarket scene, as I believe several aftermarket companies have resin ammunition for the M40A1 recoilless. As for this little box here, this would be that of the gunner's optic. The optic on the M40 is housed in this little protective box, and to access the optic, you would flip this open, which would reveal the optic on the inside. Now, the kit does feature the optic detailing, however, again, you have the option of modeling this component in the open or closed state. Since this model is being built in the transport mode, having the optic exposed is not necessary. Another nice bit of detailing found on the M40 is that of the M8C spotting rifle. One very interesting trait that the M40 has is that in order to help guide and aim the weapon, this is facilitated with that of a spotting rifle. Now this is very different compared to other anti-tank weapons in that you simply use the optic, you line the sights up on the target, and fire the system. On the M40, as a way to pre test if you're going to hit the target or not, you line the sights up and you fire a round from the M8C. The M8C was a semi-automatic 50 caliber rifle that fed from a box magazine and the way it worked was that it fired a specialty tracer 50 caliber round that once it hits the target the gunner would know exactly where the main round would go so he would line the target up in his sights, fire the M8C, when he sees that the tracer round hits the, the target that he wants to hit, he then fires the main recoilless rifle. The kit gives you the components for the M8C, and it's very nicely detailed again for the scale. We have here the detachable box magazine. Now, the box magazine rendered is the original, I believe, 10-round magazine. Later on, 30-round magazines were developed for the M8C, but again, for this model here, it has molded in that of the 10 rounder. We have here the charging handle for that of the the weapon and you can see here the gas system which is found on the side portion here of the rifle. To fire both the M8C and the M40 this was facilitated by this knob that we have here on the center portion of the elevation crank wheel. If you notice on this model here I painted in red as this was a feature I've seen on a few real examples of the M40A1. Now, if we notice, the, both the M8C and the M40 have two cables emerging from them. These cables are found on the real vehicle and are what trigger and fire both systems. The wiring that you see here was not supplied with kit and was added by myself with two lengths of very thin floral wire. These are two details I definitely recommend for anyone that either has this kit or any other M40 type recoilless rifle kit in that's out there on the market in either 135 or I believe the old Glencoe one that was in 116. As for the firing solenoid or the cable I should say for the main the main M40 this emerges out of the yoke that we have back here it travels along it enters into a small hole here which is on the side of the carrying handle mount and enters into this portion here of the breech block. This is on the real gun which would connect to the firing pin sear and would fire the main gun. As for the M8C, it again emerges from the center yolk of the M40 and would connect directly to the back portion here of the M8C which would then connect to the trigger assembly found again on the inside portion of this housing. And again the cable 
mounts to the back portion here of this thin little box that is found just next to the magazine well. Moving on to the paint and the markings, for the model's base coat, I went ahead and utilized a darker shade of olive drab compared to my World War II counterpart builds. After World War II, into the late 40s, and also into the early and mid-1950s, the Army switched to a darker shade of olive drab compared to the lighter shades which were found at the beginning and for most of the duration during the war. By the time the M38 and the M38A1 vehicles would have came out, the older World War II shade of olive drab would have not been present on these vehicles. As for the markings, the markings that you see here are the kit supply decals and were a very decent quality for being water slide markings. They went on without any issues and weathered and lacquered on very well. As for the M40, I went ahead and painted it with a flat black as opposed to painting the, the gun with that of a olive drab coloring. Now this is interesting to point out as I've seen many examples of the M40 and the M40A1 in both an olive drab as well as a flat black coloring. There are also several variations between some of the fittings on the real counterparts and some of the pieces again are all with their parkerized black finish or I've seen a few pieces where the gas block and even some portions of the breech are found with in the white either chrome plated or with their natural metal color exposed. There are several options available and if anyone is building one of these do the research and find a particular variant that appeals to you the most. Overall I was very happy with the way the build turned out. The model does build into a very nice representation of the M38A1 series and prior to the release of this kit here in order for a modeler to get a representation of the M38A1 series, one would have to try to track down one of the civilian versions of this Jeep here, which was made by a Japanese company during the 1970s and the 1980s. Those kits were a bit rare as time goes on, and you have to put a lot of elbow grease in trying to convert one of those vehicles from the civilian model into the military model. With this kit here, not a None of those modifications or any type of headaches are required in order to get a nice representation of a military standard M38A1 Jeep. These vehicles were very iconic and even though they do not have the fame and the prestige of the World War II Willys and MP type Jeeps, these Jeeps here were widely exported and used throughout many countries of the world from the 1950s all the way up to even till today. As for a skill level recommendation, due to the small parts that are found on this model, I cannot recommend this kit to a beginner. This model here is really best for someone that has a few builds under their belt, so someone with an intermediate to an advanced range would be best for tackling one of these kits. As for the type of person who would really enjoy building this kit, this kit here I definitely recommend for anyone who is an avid fan of soft skin military vehicle modeling, namely that of fans of working with Jeeps. Anyone who is an avid diehard Jeep fan who has a collection of the Willys MB all the way up to the M151 Mutt will definitely enjoy and appreciate the M38A1 to fill that hole that would be in their vehicle collection. These kits are also extremely well suited for anyone who is working with a diorama. For anyone who is working with a diorama replicating that of a Cold War type scene, this vehicle here would fit in fantastically with a scene that would depict that of an M48A1 or an M47 or even an M41 Walker Bulldog. With the plethora of newly released Cold War era main battle tanks that have been trickling onto the 135th scale market, if anyone wants to really spice up and spruce up their diorama, one of these kits is definitely something that would scratch that itch. And of course, another person who would definitely appreciate a kit like this would be a person that actually has and collects the real M38A1 Jeep family. There are many of them floating around and something like this would definitely be appreciated by someone to keep on their fireplace since they have the real one sitting in the garage. And with that, that wraps up this 135th scale model showcase video for this M40 recoilless rifle equipped M38A1C quarter ton Jeep. 
If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook, where there are more photographs of this particular build that have been posted, along with many of the other smaller scale builds that are found on the ECA channel. In addition to that, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.